really great to be here. Uh, thank you all for sticking around for the second day. So Recursion is a drug discovery company that uses machine learning and very large biological data sets to reimagine the way we bring new drugs to patients. And actually, a fun fact about Recursion is it was founded out of uh, the Stanford GSB Ignite program just down the road uh, back in 2013. So Recursion sits um, at the intersection of essentially growing dichotomy between the biopharma industry and the tech industry. So over the past couple decades, um, we've seen a massive increase in the cost of R&D to bring a new drug to market. While over the same period, um, as we've talked about today, or yesterday, we've seen a massive decrease in the cost of compute, the cost of storage. In fact, the data that Recursion is storing today would have cost our entire Series A uh, about 10 years ago. And the increase in R&D spend on the pharma side has unfortunately not translated into new medicines for patients. While all the innovation in tech has essentially made the smartphones in our pocket more powerful than some of the largest computers 20 years ago. Now, if you pay attention to you know, the, the bio Twitter sphere, everyone will say, look, drug discovery is incredibly hard. It's much harder than building apps. It's much harder than building, building devices. And we totally agree. But we're landing rockets from space. Don't you think we should be able to use technology to advance the health of patients. So one of the challenges we face is sort of fundamental biology in that for over 100 years, the way that we've tried to understand biology is to look at uh, very large pathways and tear them apart into individual component pieces. And the more we understand about biology, the more we realize we just can't understand this incredible complexity. And what this has led to in drug discovery is essentially a formula where we focus on one disease, we choose a target, and we spend about a decade trying to understand that disease and that target with the hope that at the end of the day, those drugs are gonna work in patients. And oftentimes they do, but oftentimes they also don't. And in fact, many companies are often working on the same targets. So at Recursion, we've considered a different formula. We've said, what if we can begin by studying many diseases, by taking a systems-level approach? What if we could test millions of hypotheses in parallel and essentially paralyze the drug discovery process using a combination of automation and machine learning? So what we've done is built a immense drug discovery automation platform that enables us to run today over 300,000 experiments every week. We're generating about 7 million images. So these are microscopy images of cells per week. And to date, we've generated about 2 petabytes of biological image data. That's about the size of all the movies in Netflix. And we're having a little bit of a, of a race with Netflix to see who has more data. Netflix definitely wins that one. These images represent cells that have been perturbed in a number of different ways. We can knock down genes, we can add drugs, we can add cytokines, and these cells respond in a diversity of ways to all of these biological perturbations. And we're able to capture this biology using machine learning methods. These data sets are comparable to omics level data sets in the images and the data that they contain. The challenge is extracting that data. So what we do is we run experiments on a weekly basis. We put these images through our data analysis pipeline that includes several, several types of machine learning and deep learning approaches. And we're able to essentially capture very complex biology in a mathematical representation space. And in that regime, we can actually do biology by reducing it to more simple mathematics. To give you a sense of how this works, very sim simply, we could think of a lot of the experiments we're doing as beginning with a healthy representation of cells and a disease representation of cells. And that can be just about any type of biology. 
And what we're trying to do is find drugs that reverse that disease representation to look more normal. So to give you an example of some of the work we're doing, here's a program that we're working on for a rare genetic disease. This is a disease that's caused by loss of a single gene. And what we're able to do here is find drugs that reverse that genetic context without any understanding of the biological pathway whatsoever. We create a model of the disease in human cells by essentially removing the gene, and we're able to ask machine learning algorithms to, to characterize the difference between those two states, and we can look for drugs that essentially reverse the biology of the genetic perturbation. We can also use these types of approaches to model more complex biology. So if anyone's been following the oncology field, there's been a ton of excitement around immunology in oncology. And in particular, one cell type um, has been at the forefront for some years, and these are the macrophages. So we know that macrophages, depending on the state in which they exist, uh, can either uh, promote tumors or they can promote um, other types of immune cells going into the tumors and attacking the tumors. So what we were able to do is using images of macrophages alone, identify them as being in any of these multiple biological states so that we can then find drugs that drive macrophages towards an anti-tumor state or prevent them from going into a pro-tumor state. So as we all know, however, drug discovery is not just about finding drugs that are effective in the disease. We also need to make sure that drugs are safe for patients. So one of the projects we've been working on for about a year now is to begin generating very large data sets of gold standard uh, cellular pharmacology safety information that can help us to understand whether drugs are safe very early on in the process. So what I'm showing you here are just three examples. So we've been looking at rough, a small number of compounds, a few thousand, um, in gold standard tests of, of cardiac toxicity, liver toxicity, um, and long-term viability. And we were able to show, uh, with a relatively small data set, just a few thousand compounds, that we were able to predict whether drugs will work or be active in these, in these toxicity assays from the original images alone that we are producing. However, one of the more exciting areas that we're going into at Recursion is moving beyond biology that we've been performing for you know, 20 years and looking at the combination, the intersection of machine learning with state-of-the-art biology in human iPSC-derived cells. So what I'm looking at, what I'm showing you here, are essentially skin cells that have been turned into human heart cells. Um, we can we can culture these in spheres in either a 3D4 well or a 1536-well format, and we can monitor their activity using dyes. Now, we can build these assays, we can apply thousands of drugs, and we can measure how drugs affect these beating heart cells. These are early days for, these, for this particular experiment, and we're not doing any machine learning here, but on a very basic level, we can already begin to monitor how drugs affect cardiac tissue and we can begin to take this high-dimensional data and apply machine learning methods to ask whether we can use the original image set to begin to predict different activities. So what I've shown you so far is a lot of the work that we've done where we're actually doing biology. But one of the big benefits of using machine learning is to move beyond running the experiments and get to inference and prediction. So what's represented here is actually real data in red, what you see are roughly a few dozen human disease genes where we've been able to identify biological representations. And we are essentially plotting them on this sphere with the distance between the gene related to the similarity of their biology. And in blue, what you're looking at are hundreds of drugs that have been looked at in the same type of way. Now we can zoom in on any specific disease gene and the drug that we know reverses the biology of that gene. And what we see is that it actually sits opposite to the drug in this three-dimensional representation. So what this means is that if we can represent hundreds, thousands of human genes, millions of human drugs in this way, 
then we can begin to make predictions without running the experiment that will enable us to move closer and closer to precision therapeutics. So in the last couple of minutes, I just want to stop and talk a little bit about um, a data set that we're about to release in a couple weeks because we were talking about the importance of, of data sets for uh, machine learning applications. Uh, so the data set is called the RxRx1 data set, and you can get more information on the rxrx.ai website. And essentially what we're releasing is over 100,000 images representing about 1,100 different genetic contexts. And it's the same experiment that's been performed over 51 weeks. And so what you're seeing here is just a subset of these images. And if I asked everyone in the audience to you know, tell me what's similar about these images, you'd probably, you can look at them and you can say, well, it looks like there's four different columns that represent the same biology. But actually what's in these images is two rows that represent the same biology and four columns that represent different experiments. And so the purpose of this data set is to enable the machine learning community to begin to develop algorithms that can understand fundamental biology and separate the biology from the experimental noise that you would see uh, from experiments that have run, been run at different times or in different labs um, across the country. Uh, so with that, thank you very much, and uh, I'll be available for questions after. <laughs>